bust your back. No, oh, I can do this standing on my head. You made a bad bet, Reese. Pay up and forget it. <laughs> you just watch. Oh, 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 my back. My back. I done something to my back. All right, oh. Atlas, straighten up. I can't. I think I broke it. Why isn't that so? Well, he ought to be pretty good at spotting cigar butts anyway. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. Do something. Will you do something? Well, we'll try if you stop clowning, Reese. I ain't clowning. Don't pen it, Riley Cooper. Oh, what are you doing, Reese? Looking for cigar butts? Oh. I've got a job for you three. A town named Grover's Bend. Religious community up there led by a Mr. Snilly. Pacifists call themselves the Peaceables, believe in the Brotherhood of Man. Thinking like that, they came to Texas? Reese, straighten up when I talk to you. Now, according to this wire from a Mr. Tinker, storekeeper, the Peaceables got themselves treed by a hard bunch. It's against their principles to defend themselves. Nope. No sheriff, no law. Oh. They're entitled to protection. You're gonna give it to them. Oh. Reese, straighten up and stop groaning. Well, I... Well, I... I think I done something on my back, Captain. Nothing four or five days ride won't cure. And get up there right away and straighten things out. And don't waste any time about it. Please, gentlemen, for your own peace of mind, don't do this thing. Stand aside, Snelly, or I'll have him run you down. You hear that, Aces? He doesn't move, run him down. But, Mr. Garms, why would you harm us? We've never harmed you. We've never harmed anyone. This is cattle country, Snilly. That's reason enough. Now, you stand away. Ooh. Mr. Tinker, you can take that wire back where you got it. They won't be needing anymore. Why don't you leave these people alone, Garms? Oh, that's enough talk. Now, you're with them, we can give you the same, storekeeper. Run them through! Oh! <laughs> Peaceable's got one week to pull up stakes. Otherwise, we'll kill all your stinking sheep and burn your crops and your houses and your barns. When we're done, we'll bury you. Now, I said one week. Boy, you've done all the living you will ever do. No, it's nothing serious. He just kind of threw his back out. Well, that can be painful, gentlemen. He needs rest. He is, of course, more than welcome to stay right where he is. My daughter Delia will care for him. We have a spare bedroom. He just might take some care. We believe in the power of mercy, sir. Well, we didn't come here to talk about our partner, Miss Snelly. Now, we understand you've been having a lot of trouble from some wild bunch. Gentlemen. I assure you, we can solve our small problems without recourse to the Rangers. Small problems? We heard you'd had stock run off. Folks have been beat up. Pranks, I assure you. Merely pranks perpetrated by high-spirited cowboys. We put people in prison for pranks like that. Or bury them. That's the kind of talk I'd expect to hear from Rangers. We know all about your violence, and that's not what we want here. No, we are men and women of peace. There are no problems which cannot be solved by reason, rationality, understanding, and a spirit of brotherly love. Moral courage and love will overcome our difficulties. Right, my dear? Of course, Father. The others are just poor, misguided, misunderstood young men. We are extending to them the hand of friendship. That's a good way to get your hand bit off. Gentlemen, our problems are our own fault. 
for not convincing Mr. Garms and his friends that we love them. Garms? Who's Garms? A cattle rancher. Inherited everything from his father. Too wealthy for his own good. Sir, have you been a ranger long? <laughs> Quite a while, ma'am. Quite a while. Well, you just don't seem to be cut from the same violent mold as your friends. You seem somehow gentle. Well, I am, ma'am. I really am. Just like a baby. Ain't I, boys? Yeah, he's infantile in a lot of ways. Matter of fact, his favorite game's playing with beer barrels. I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing, Mr. Snelly. Joe, why don't you and me have a look around? Reese, you may as well stay here until you feel better. I'd be delighted. Keep your hog leg handy, Reese. In case anybody tries to take a pot shot at Snilly. Gentlemen, I won't stand for that. Absolutely no violence. Well, now, if it wasn't for my back, I wouldn't need no gun at all. At all. You are brave, aren't you? Kinda goes with the job, man. True bravery. True courage. Well, that's moral courage, Mr. Bennett. The determination to stand up for what you believe in under all conditions without violence. Well, I believe you have that kind of courage, Mr. Bennett. I do. I can tell just by looking at you. You have a wealth of character in your face. Let's get on about our business, Chad. Good idea, Joe. Reese, uh, any way you want to do it, just try to keep an eye on these folks just in case, huh? Well, that'll be my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. Men of violence. They ain't so bad. They only shoot folks when they've been shot at first. Even my dear, perhaps Mr. Bennett would like to hear more about our little group of peaceables, our philosophies and beliefs. Oh, sure, I'm, I'm really interested in philo... Uh, 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 well, uh, what you said, yeah. Well, I've got to get back to my chores. I must admit, Mr. Bennett, I am intrigued by you. A man of violence, used to force, and yet underneath it all just as gentle as a kitten. And to think that all these years you've been doing everything wrong. Wrong? Very wrong. For it is by love and brotherhood and understanding that people shall live. Reason the mind and the heart working together. Men and women working side by side. Yeah, side by side. I have so much to tell you. Don't you see? When you use violence on your opponent, well, you're admitting that you've run out of rational arguments. Even if you're overcoming by force, you've lost morally. Understand? Well, I, uh... I just ain't never looked at it that way, ma'am. It's because you never had a chance to. But you will try, won't you? You will try to give up your violent ways. Turn the other cheek. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Love thine enemy. You think I ought to, huh? Oh, I do, Mr. Bennett. I do. And you would be astonished at the way it works. Imagine, to be able to... to be able to enforce the law by the power of... Brotherhood, mutual understanding, and trust. There would be no more beatings, and gunplay, and killing. Just love. Yeah, love. Oh, you will try, won't you, Mr. Bennett? By golly, I'm going to do it. Wonderful. And I'll stand by you every moment. Now, what about your two friends? Oh, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd better go talk to Chad and Joe. No. Oh, oh. No, don't move, Mr. Bennett. I'll go get them and you talk to them. You know, man, you're just wonderful. So are you. I'll be right back.
Recognize him? Ace is Brady. We got any new wants on him? Oh, not that I know of. I wonder if he's mixed up in this. He's here, isn't he? Means he's mixed up in it. Take a walk, honey. Suppose you don't know anything about them two rangers just got into town. Rangers? Here. You sure aces? Oh, I'm very sure. I recognize them from Laredo. They just tied up at Tinker's. Mr. Tinker don't know what side his bread's buttered on. Let's make sure you know which side your bread's buttered on, huh? Yeah, it was me sent for you, Rangers. Now, mind you, these peaceables ain't my kind of folks. I don't hold none with sheep herders. But ain't nobody rates the kind of treatment that Egg Arms has been giving them. Well, what kind of treatment's that? Well, they hired Aces Brady to bring in some gun hands. They got these poor folks up a tree half the time. Tore down the wire, shot the sheep, beat up on them. It's like there ain't no law around here. And there ain't. Well, what do you figure is the reason that Garms is doing all this? Well, he claims it's for the good of the town. You know, the peaceables flat close things up around here. Yeah. But just between you and me, I figure that Ed Garms is trying to get their land for a nickel on the dollar. You know, he's going to force them out and then buy it up for nothing. That makes sense, not don't it? Yeah, it makes pretty good sense. Maybe we ought to go have a talk with Mr. Gomes. Hmm? Thanks a lot. Like a regular roof gallery. Who's Gimes? Who wants to know? Well, we do. Mr. Cooper, Mr. Riley. Delia, welcome. I am not interested in talking to you, Mr. Gimes. I just want to make sure that no violence occurs. Oh, uh, look, Miss Snelly. I've been wanting to talk to you, Delia. Mr. Bennett wants to talk to you. Later. We're busy. Now, why don't you just run along? If you'd listen to me, Delia, maybe we could settle this whole thing. Mr. Garms, until you renounce your violent ways, I am certain we have nothing to talk about. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Riley? We'll talk to him later. Now, if you don't mind, ma'am. Well, I implore you to talk to Mr. Bennett before it is too late. If you'll just go away and let us handle this, I promise you we won't shoot any of these men unless it's absolutely necessary, all right? That's big talk. Very well. I'll tell Mr. Bennett then to expect you. I'll ride back with you. No, thank you, Mr. Garms. Well, now maybe we can talk, hmm? Well, there's nothing to talk about. We don't need rangers around here. Well, you've got them, Garms. Why don't you leave Snelly and his people alone? Well, because they've ruined the range, just like they ruined this town. This is cattle country, gentlemen. Now, they're sheep. Sheep or not, they're entitled to protection, and that's what they're getting. There's only two of you. I reckon that's enough. I'll handle this. I'm well known in this county. The people usually listen to what I have to say. Do they now? We don't want any trouble down here. You have trouble down here, Mr. Garms. That's why we're here. And if there's any more with Snilly or his people, you're going to have fireworks. Sabi? That a threat? Yes, I'm glad you noticed that. Did we make it clear? I think we made it clear, Joe. Well, uh, this kind of changes things with them here. I never like ranges from the way back. Maybe we better go easy. Too late to go easy. I don't want trouble with the rangers. Trouble? Only two of them is better than a dozen of us. I kind of like them odds. What are you talking about? Look, you hired me to help you solve your problem here. By getting rid of the rangers, we solve everything at once. You get rid of your sheep herders, and I get to even up an old score. You mean kill them? 
You're very smart today, Gonzi. That's just what I mean. It's not your back that's hurt, Reese. It's your head. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you. I know. Violence besets my... Begets. Yeah. Violence begets violence. All we have to do is to... is to go to them with a spirit of a brotherly love. Right? Absolutely, Mr. Bennett. Ma'am, what'd you do to him? Mr. Bennett has seen the light. He's become one of our spiritual brothers. Reese, we've been sent down here to do a job. Now, you take one good look at Aces Brady, and you're going to know there's only one way to do it. Oh, now, Chad. I know what you're thinking. But that's uh, that's been our trouble all along, you know, taking the violent way, busting heads and going around ventilating people. But I've got a better way. Now, listen, Reese. We gotta clean them out of there like a nest of sidewinders. It is people like you who are responsible for most of the problems in the world. Now we must learn to love one another. Mr. Bennett has seen the light. Now why don't you follow his lead? Because his lead heads straight for Boot Hill, ma'am. Reese, we came down here to do a job. Let's get it done. Oh, you you got force and violence on your mind. Now. We gotta handle this with, with brotherhood and, and moral courage, which I just happen to be loaded with. I don't even know why we bother with him. You can find us at the old sheriff's office if you then we'll come to your senses. Poor misguided men. I certainly hope they don't get into any trouble. Oh, they'll get into trouble, all right. I know them violent types, Miss Delia. I, uh, I used to be one myself. Uh, ma'am? Hmm? Yes? I think I can walk some now. You just bring me my clothes and I'll mosey on downtown and I'll have that peaceful talk with that Mr. Garms. Are you sure you're up to it? Oh, I'm feeling lots better. Lots better, ma'am. Well, I just washed your clothes and they're not dry yet. But I think some of my father's will fit you. Well, you mean I got... Well, uh, if I'm going to act peaceable, there's no sense why I shouldn't look peaceable, huh? Well, I'll go on downtown with you. Oh, now, now there's no call for that, ma'am. Now, I won't interfere. I'll keep my distance and leave everything in your hands. Everything will be safe, won't it? I mean, there won't be any violence. Oh, heaven forbid. I just don't want a nice girl like you exposed to them them rough type jaspers, that's all. I knew you were like that inside. I'll just go get those clothes. <laughs> Be my guest. Yeah. 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 I don't reckon that our uh, future guests will mind too much, do you? Gentlemen, come oh, here. I got a set of keys for you. How well, much obliged. Thank you. I sure hope you get this mess cleaned up before somebody gets hurt. Well, that's our plan, Mr. Tinker. A mighty rough outfit. 
They even threatened to kill some of them peaceables. Did they now? Yeah, I hear they'd give them till tonight to get out of town. Or else. Tonight, huh? That didn't give us much time, did it? No. Oh, 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 oh. Now, all right. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to talk to him. Now, now, you stay out here, because you're a lady, and that saloon ain't no place for you. Now, you won't forget what I told you. Well, now, heavens forbid, heavens. No, I'm just a, a going to go in there and have a brotherly talk with him. Now, you stay put, Miss Daly. You stay put. <laughs> now, tonight, I want every barn and every house burned down. I want every inch of crop burned and every wire cut. And then maybe they'll know we mean business. We, uh, want to give Mr. Combs a real show for his money, don't we, boy? Yeah. Aces, <laughs> I don't want you to go through with this. Contracts are contract, Gomes. Well, now, what do you want? Well, I, uh, I just come here to... Give you the good word, that's all. Uh, get out of here. Would you like to try putting me out? No, I ain't got no gun. And I don't need one for a crummy bunch like you. I just come here to talk nice and peaceful. Delia, what are you doing here? Hi, Miss Dilly. Well, <laughs> uh, brothers, what I what I want to tell you is all this violence, what well, well, ain't going to settle nothing. What we need is a little mutual understanding. A little understanding, huh? <clears throat> yeah. Violence ain't moral. Well, then maybe you got an idea about something better. Why, now I sure have. We can all just sit down right here and talk it out. Maybe over a drink, huh? Well, now, that's a good idea. We all sit down and we have a drink and, uh... Bird, get this good man a chair! Aces, listen. Oh, shut up, will you, Goms? The Bert. Pour this man a drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's a sinful waste of good whiskey, I'll tell you that. <laughs> losing his temper, boy. I reckon he's a, a hot headed <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Let's sit down and talk this thing over. Oh, this man's hat is on fire. <laughs> Boys, you better take him out and cool him down. <laughs> 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 I'm so proud of you, Mr. Bennett. You are, huh? You handled those ruffians exactly right. Yeah, well, they, they handled me pretty good, too. You showed them that you were their spiritual superior. Well, ma'am, I ain't sure being a superior spiritual is going to solve anything at all. Well, fight those doubts, Mr. Bennett. Now, you promised. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I sure did. Come along. You'll catch your death. <laughs> what were you doing over the sheriff's office, Tinker? That's my business, not yours. <laughs> Uh-uh. Now, ma'am, you stay put. Will you remember your promise? Oh, for now. Well, all right. I'll remember. You got a 
learn, Starkeeper. <laughs> all right, all right, what's going on here? Now, you guys leave that fellow alone. You looking for some of the same? Yeah, only now the odds are even. Mr. Bennett, you're forgetting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, brothers, what I mean is, uh, they're really... Ain't no need for violence at all. We can just kind of sit down and talk this whole thing over like brothers. Remember, love is stronger than hate. What? Well, I never thunk of that. Tell us more. You see, Mr. Bennett? You see, Mr. Tinker? You go around busting people's heads in, it's, uh, well, it's just like you're admitting that you lost the whole argument. Now. Ain't no reason why we just can't sit down and talk this whole thing over in a friendly way, huh? Well, danged if you don't make good sense, mister. I never quite looked at it that way before. You just, uh, tell me what you got against that fella you've been working over, and, and we'll work this whole thing out, huh? I got a better way to work things out. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> Would you believe that's Reese Bennett that just did that, too? It's sad. It's the woman. Usually it. <laughs> oh, you're slipping, Ben. He's moving. I'll just give him the boot. Change his mind. Good. Wouldn't do that, mister. What? Try it, and you'll never use that foot again. Are you both under arrest? Disturbing the peace for, uh... Assaulting a citizen and, um... Litter in the street. You ain't taking us no place. Ben! <laughs> what did you do to oh. them? Just oh. let them sleep for a while, ma'am. They'll be fine. Bullies! Well, they almost knocked poor Mr. Bennett's block off, didn't they, ma'am? Well, at least he had the moral courage to stand up armed with only a courageous heart. Well, that's just swell. It almost got him killed. They were just, just lucky, man. Poor Mr. Bennett. I'm going to take you right home and put you to bed. Well, why don't you let her do that, Mr. Bennett? You're sure not going to be any help around here. Let's get him to jail, Joe. Oh. You were magnificent. I was. This nonviolence is, is kind of tough when the, when the other side, they don't follow it. That's <laughs> where your moral courage comes in. Well, now, it's a, it's a good thing that I got plenty of it, huh? Oh, you do, Mr. Bennett. You do. <laughs> hey, they got Ben and Sam. Not for long, they ain't. Come on. There's two more. Good. You! Drop those two. That suit you? We're taking them. Ah, no, you're not. We're taking you. You're under arrest for uh, something we'll think up later. Put your hands behind your head real quiet like. I got mine on the right leg, Joe. How about you? Left leg. All right, he's got one good leg left. Get up, put your arms around each other's shoulders, and you'll find you can make it to the jail nice and easy. I'm waiting. Just like that. Four of my best men. They're too tough. We gotta call it off. Look, Gomes, those are my boys, and no lousy rangers are gonna put them in jail. I'll show those three more. Aces, listen. I changed my mind. 
What if we kill a ranger? If we kill them, they're dead. Now, look, you hired me to see that them peaceables are scared out of town. And if we have to take along a couple of rangers, that's just a bonus. Enough being used as shirts. Yeah, we wouldn't want them bleeding all over our nice clean cell. What are we gonna do about Reese? I don't know. I've been thinking about that. That man comes up with the craziest ideas sometimes. Sure does. You can't blame him too much. That woman's got him eating right out of her hand. It's not exactly a bad hand to eat out of. You're not the only person that's noticed that, Joe. Well, I know you noticed it. Not me, I'm talking about it. It's Garms. He likes what he sees, too. You know, we might be able to make something out of that. What are we going to do about the rest of the punks? We're not doing so bad. we got four already. Of course, we could use some more. Maybe we ought to start enforcing the law, Chad. That's a good idea, Joe. We are lawmen, aren't we? Cooper, I've always admired your outstanding civic spirit. Cooper. I'm glad you noticed that fact. Let's go. Afraid you went and done it. Went and done what? You expectorated on a public sidewalk. I did what? You spat, sir. And paragraph 13, section D, subsection M clearly states that, well, I don't want to bore you with all the legal details. Let's just say you're under arrest. I'm what? Resisting arrest, too? Why are you? Uh uh. And now insulting a law officer in the performance of his duty. You're getting in deeper all the time. Step inside. What's the worst, my, my head or my back? You were marvelous. Yeah, well, maybe so. But I want to have a nice, long talk with you about this, this non-violent stuff right soon. Well, you're living proof that it works. Yeah? Why, just because I'm alive? By your example, you are proving that brotherhood works. Well, so far, all I've proven is that I got a harder head than anybody else. Oh, you poor boy. It hurts for now, but just think. When the pain is gone, the pride of accomplishment will remain. You just lie right there. And I'll go fix you something nice to eat. Dip your finger in the water cup. Dip your finger in the water cup. Oh. Oh. Because I'm tormented by the flame. Uh. Howdy. Sheriff's office. So? Public building. All right, so it's a public building. You just defaced it. I what? You scratched it with that match. Are you crazy? You resist an arrest. Arrest? Yep, you resist an arrest. You gotta be real careful with these public buildings. Aces, please listen to me. I'll pay you right now for the whole job. Just, just forget about it. Look, I've got the money. I'll take the money when I'm finished. Forget the peaceable. Get out of my hair, Goms. Please, Aces, no killing. You bought that chance when you bought me. Now shut up! I want a couple of you to take cover so you can watch the front of the jail. When the ruckus starts and the rangers come out, drop them. Now get moving. Come on. Now, you bought yourself a job, and you're going to get one. I didn't buy killing. <laughs> Not rangers. Maybe. But you're paying for it, so you might as well enjoy it. Come on. There you go, boys. Compliments to the Texas Rangers. Yeah, thanks for nothing. A lousy plate of beans. I bet your old man told you you'd never even amount to that much. Mm 
Well, I say we at least put a crimp in them. Yeah, so far. We still got a good aces and garment. An ace has still got six or eight gunmen left. Yeah. We could be here for a week, Chad. Maybe. At least we got about half of them. What if all of a sudden they decide to become law-abiding? Well, I guess we just have to stir them up a little. Looks like we won't have to. I'd say that's disturbing the peace, Joe. It's good enough for me. Just about does it. They probably got us locked up for it. With us in here, there's nothing to stop them from burning the peaceables out. How much ammo do you figure we got? Well, we ought to have enough to last us for a couple of hours at this rate. <laughs> what then? I don't know, but maybe it's like Snilly says, maybe they'll call it off. Just a childish prank. See it that way. I'm good for I'm serious. <laughs> Getting pretty careless with those bullets, Joe. Well, it's not the bullets, it's Reese. He's laying around and that woman's filling him full of crazy notions. I never saw the like of it. He does everything she tells him to. Yeah, well, he never did have much sense anyhow. Monkey see, monkey do. You know him. Yeah, monkey see, monkey do. What? Well, what we really need is the old Reese Bennett out there busting heads again, right? Well, yeah, but I don't see how that's going to help us do anything. Well, I do. What we need is a party, Joe. You don't think Ace is going to talk, do you? Nope, but I think Garms will. Garms! Garms, come on out and talk. We want to make a deal. Come on out, we'll hold our fire. Come on out and talk. Maybe you ought to go talk to them, Gomsy. What do they want with me? I don't know. Maybe they want to make a deal or something. Go out and promise them safe conduct. Just anything to get them out in the open. You'd kill them. <laughs> Maybe. Now go out and talk to them. Aces! I said go. Hold your fire! He's coming. Hello, Grimes. What do you want? Aces Brady. We figure he's the one causing all the trouble. Well, you're just paying him, aren't you, Grimes? Look, I'm trying to call the whole thing off. I don't want Ranger trouble, but Aces won't quit. He's blackmailing me. Why, that's terrible. That's illegal. Just one more count against him. But you're, you're smart to try to get yourself out of this thing, Grimes. Why? If I had a woman like Delia crazy about me, I'd be, I'd be happy with what I got. Delia? She hates me. Don't you know anything about women? She's just being coy. Why? She told Joe and me she's real attracted to you. Well, you stand up for yourself and take what you want, and you're strong and manly. She said that. So help me. Of course, she is getting a little disappointed that you haven't done anything about it. Well, I tried to talk to her. Talk? A situation like this doesn't call for talking, calls for doing. 
Why, a woman like Delia needs a man to just rush right up to her and take her in his arms and carry her off. Ain't that right, Joe? That's right, Gimes. You gotta treat her rough, show her who's boss. Why are you telling me all this? Well, we figure if we do you a favor with Delia, you'll do us one with Aces. If you go down there and sweep her off her feet like we tell you, we figure you'll come back here and give us a hand with Aces. Team up, maybe. That way you get the woman you want, and you get yourself off the hook at the same time. Maybe you're lying. Now, why would we lie? We're the ones in trouble. Go out and find out for yourself. Just walk right up to her and grab her. You'll see. She really said she liked me? Crazy about you. I knew she'd come around. All right. I'll do it. Good boy. Monkey see, monkey do. Oh, but when he grabs hold of her. Whew. Yes, sir, but I sure wouldn't want to be the monkey that grabs onto her without asking permission first. <laughs> mm. If you're looking for my father, he's out back. Oh, I saw you, Paul. He didn't want me to come in. You didn't hurt him. Didn't have to. That's one of the nice things about you people. I've come calling on you, Delia. You stay away from me. Well, that's all right, Delia. I know you're crazy about Don't you touch me! Well, now, come on, honey. We got a lot of getting acquainted to do. <sighs> Mr. Bennett. What's wrong? It's Mr. Garms. He's come for Delia, and he won't listen to reason. and violence in the bosom of my own home. My, my, you, you sure put a, a dent in that frying pan, man. From now on, you're gonna have some, some funny-looking fried eggs. How can we make him understand? Oh, he understands all right. At least he will when he comes to. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, the fact that my daughter had a temporary moral lapse... Mr. Snelly, your daughter is my teacher. And I wouldn't think about going against her teaching just because she had a temporary moral relapse. Siri. All right, Garms, come on, let's go. Ooh, 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 ooh. The pain's gone. It don't hurt no more. <laughs> Everything's gonna be just fine. <laughs> All right, Garms, let's go. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm gonna put my clothes on and then I'm gonna take this poor critter into town and render him first aid. Now, you won't do anything rash, Mr. Bennett. Remember your moral courage. Oh, I'm just the boiling with it, man. Just the boiling with it. Everything's gonna be all right. All right! <laughs> Here comes Reese. Who's he carrying? Now, who do you think he's carrying? You ain't gonna get those rangers while they're inside, I'll tell you that right now. You'd better sucker them up. Now, we've tried that, but... You again. Who you got there? Well, this here is Garms. You know, he had a bad accident. You put him down. Well, now he's in pretty bad shape. I said put him down. Well, suit yourself. 
over the head with a frying pan. What I can understand is why he suddenly came after me. Well, I cannot tell a lie, ma'am. I sent him after you. You sent him? Yeah. You put that poor little girl there in danger? Well, Reese, I'm a pretty good judge of character. I didn't, I didn't think she'd take much pawn. Why, Mr. Cooper, I might have killed him. On the other hand, I didn't think Reese would let you do that. You sent him? Yeah. Up to her, so that I would... You fit. Oh, I'm gonna, when I get you back, I'm gonna tell you, limb from limb, you double cross for no good. I, uh, I beg your pardon, Miss Dean. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cooper. Yes, ma'am. I have a dreadful confession to make. Oh, what's that? Hitting Mr. Garms over the head with that frying pan gave me more pleasure than anything that's ever happened to me. Well, I kind of figured you'd like it once you tried it. Excuse me, ma'am. Thanks, partner. Oh, Mr. Snelly. One more thing. Uh, if I were you nice folks, I'd, uh, I'd hire me a good man for sure. A fellow that's not afraid to do what has to be done when trouble comes along. And that way, you could be just as nonviolent as you please. Well, now, there's no need for that. Just give Miss Delia there a frying pan and make her share. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. We got a long ride. Right. Bye now. Best chances to try riding through. Close little part. You don't have a chance. Wanna die here for sure? Take a chance out there. Will you mount up? we swing out, those rangers will have to stay with us. So you go that way. Pick up Lester and the rest of the boys. Meet me at the old revival barn. Don't get yourself killed. I'm not gonna get rid of you that easy. It's a two-way street cutler. Let's 
gather up our horses and start tracking, Reese. Well, how about that one over there? That looked like a girl to me. Color's the one we want. Let's go. Huh. My old leg wound has been bothering me. I'm going to see the doctor oh, about it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll walk along with you. No, uh, don't bother, old friend. I'll I'll be all right. Oh, it's no bother at all. You see, I was, I was going there myself. I got a little something in my eye. <laughs> well, if it isn't heaven's answer to the working girls, I'm going to see the doctor, boys? Well, now, wh what makes you think that, Kim? The smell of hair tonic hangs heavy in the air. She's been in town only half a day. How do these things get around so fast? On the express? Good to see you again, Jesse. <laughs> oh, Jesse, I'd, uh, I'd like you to meet two of your future patients. Chad Cooper, Eric Hunter. Gentlemen, Dr. Jessica Boyd Pomerley, my sister-in-law. Your sister-in-law? Anything wrong with that? Well, <laughs> no, sir. We're just, just a little surprised. Sorry, ma'am, but we didn't know that the captain's brother left a widow behind. The war is over and done with. We live for the future now, don't we, Jesse? One can't live in the past. Well, the captain has told us the finest stories about his brother, ma'am. We're honored to meet his wife. You're very kind. Excuse me, Captain. They told me I might find you here. What is it, Joe? It's Bart Cutler, sir. Reese and I had him trapped, but he got away. We tracked him all the way to Beaver Creek. Reese is still out guarding the trail. The Beaver Creek? Now, why would he be heading for Laredo? I don't know, Captain. Maybe he figures to hold up until after dark and then double back. Let's go back to the office. I want every available man on the trails right away. Excuse me, Jesse. I'll come back later and show you the town. Ma'am. What's the matter, Jesse? Old woman ought to look happy when she greets her husband. place you got here, Jesse. Then you always were a first-class woman. What, no kiss? No tears of joy? You sure do make it hard on a man, Jesse. It'll save us both a lot of trouble if you leave now. Now, now, Jesse, I'm not the kind of a man who likes a woman rushing him. You know that. Say, you got any money? Here. This has no value for me. And I know how you like to get your money's worth. I believe you have everything you came for. Now, please leave. Not until it gets dark. You know, fellas are getting killed out there. Now, you wouldn't want anything bad to happen to me, would you, Jess? Oh, that's why you're wrong. I would. It's not exactly what I'd call wifely devotion. My husband's dead. He died six years ago in the war. Yeah, that's what everybody thinks. But we know better, don't we? You know, I never did thank you for keeping my secret. Don't flatter yourself. I did it so your family wouldn't know you were a traitor and a coward. My family. You mean Ed, don't you? Oh, please leave. You worried that he's liable to come in here for tea? You afraid that I might have to kill him? No. I'm afraid that he'll have to kill you, and I'd like to spare him that. <laughs> my noble brother Ed killed me, huh? It shows just how little you know about people, Jess. Oh, yes, I always was a bad judge of character. Let's face it, you were young and hot-blooded, and you wanted a man instead of a saint. I was young. I believed in words. I know better now. Do you? I like to think that down deep inside, there's still some of that wifely craving. <whistles> you sure do know how to use that thing, Doctor. And I won't hesitate to use it. Unprofessionally. Jesse, you ready? Don't come in. 
I have a patient. I'll wait in a Surrey. Yes. Uh, I, I won't be but a moment. It sure does hurt you to lie for me, doesn't it? It's just that you're not worth the trouble. We gotta stay out here. I'm getting cold. The captain gave orders for us to stay out here till we got relief. Oh, orders, 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 orders. I got a good mind to go back to town and tell him what I think of it. Why don't you do that, Reese? I can stand guard out here alone. No. Maybe I better not. Maybe I better not. Why not? Cause if I leave you alone, you'll just you'll just bungle a job. And the captain will be mad at me, that's why. <laughs> hold it! Hold it! Easy, Kalu. You'll save Laredo the price of a hanging. Well, that's Cutler, all right. Boy, the captain's going to be happy to see him. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on that, Ranger. Hmm. Well, you don't know our captain. Now, that's where you're wrong. You see, uh, he happens to be my brother. Your brother? You're a liar. The captain's brother died a hero in the war. Dying a hero is easy. I mean, all you have to do is switch papers with a man that does. You saying that Bart Cutler died the hero? Frank Parmalee lives a coward. You mean the captain's going to have to hang his own brother? <laughs> uh, you're not so pleased with yourselves anymore, are you, boys? Well, I don't believe anything you say anything. Hold on a second, Reese. The captain showed me a picture of his brother when he joined the army. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the one with the two of us standing alongside that old well. Yeah, that was kind of sentimental, wasn't it? You mean he's telling the truth? Don't go wandering off anywhere, Cutler. He's liable to solve our problems right here and now. Captain Parmley's gonna feel awful bad when he finds out about this. Yeah, from all his talk, he felt real close to his brother. Hey, hey, why don't we just let him go, hmm? Huh? Well, that way the captain will never find out. He can't do that, Reese. He's a killer. Wait a second. He's wanted for murder on both sides of the border, isn't he? Chad, you've got it. God, what? How's it going to help the captain just because he's one on both sides of the borders, huh? Look, I'll ride on ahead and make sure we don't get lost in the dark, huh? Right. Hold it up, man. Now, I know you guys are loco. You know me cross that Rio Grande. Reese, sometimes you surprise me not being able to tell Waterman's Creek from the Rio Grande. Sure, if it was the Rio Grande, we'd be in Mexico now. Well, who says we ain't? Well, we can't be. Going into Mexico is against the captain's orders. But then what are we doing here, huh? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Now, what are you guys trying to pull? Color, if I were you, I'd keep real quiet. You know, I never shot a man in cold blood before, but for you, I just might make an exception. Well, what'd you do that for, Joe? Rattlesnake. Didn't you see him, Reese? Well, now I know you guys are loco. First, you don't even know the real Grandy when you see it, and now, you, now you're seeing things that ain't even there. Company's coming. Rallies. You see that, Joe? It wasn't bad enough. You had to get us lost here in Mexico. Now your shots brought down the rallies on us. Sorry about that, Reese. Don't know how we could have gone so far astray. Well, famous Texas Rangers. Famous Captain Montoya and his Reales. You seem to be on the wrong side of the Rio Grande, gentlemen. 
Well, that's what I've been telling them all morning. Uh, sorry, Captain. We're taking this prisoner back to Laredo. We must have gotten lost. Well, lost. I didn't get lost. Excuse me. But your prisoner. I believe his name is Bart Cutler. He's wanted in Laredo for murder. He is also wanted in Mexico. Uh, Captain, wait, wait a second. We, uh, we uh, can't allow you to take our prisoner. You cannot stop me, at least. I hope you will not try. Well, let me tell you, Captain, I'll try. Captain I'll try. Right, Reese. We're in Mexico. There's nothing we can do. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You guys are really cute. Well, you can tell my dear brother Edward that he has not heard the last of me. Gentlemen, you have one hour to leave Mexico. Hey, hey, I just thought of something. The Mexicans are gonna hang cover anyway. So all we gotta do is tell the captain Cutler's dead. And that way, well, the captain will never find out that, well, that's his brother. Reese, you're a genius. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know how you do it, Reese. Incredible. No, fellas, it was nothing. Not at all. <laughs> Just lucky we got lost here in Mexico and I. <laughs> you guys. You guys. And now, by viewing the legendary office of the legendary Captain Parmalee, you have finally completed your tour of Laredo. Fifty cents, please. Are you sure I'm not taking up too much of your time? I'm enjoying it, but I'm starting to feel a little guilty. I'm enjoying it myself. Shopping for dress cloths is a new experience for me. Oh, by the way, uh, Widow Morton is giving a little dinner party in your honor next Friday. I should warn you, the widow's a notorious matchmaker. Mm. Does that make you nervous? <laughs> you know me, Jesse. I'll take a chance on anything for a good party. <laughs> yes, I know. I remember the time you and Frank broke into the cotillion. What's wrong, Jesse? Uh, oh. Oh, it's nothing. There must be something. Every time Frank's name is mentioned, the light goes out of your eyes. It's nothing. Did I tell you I had a meeting with the shock toss? Chief Brightstar and his council want me to open a small hospital on the reservation. Is that what you want, Jesse? Sort of like going into a nunnery, isn't it? A little. But I do need to feel useful. Are you sure you're not just running away from us? Is that what you think? I don't know what to think. When you wrote that you were coming out here to, to start a new life, I thought, well, well, frankly, I'd hoped I'd be able to help. I'd hope so, too. I want you to be happy, Jesse. That's all I ever wanted for you. Yes, I know. I seem to have lost the talent for happiness lately. My green thumbs turned sour. You're not feeling sorry for yourself, are you? No. It's just that you're a very special person, Ed. Oh, hey, don't let that get around. You'll ruin my reputation. You are. You know, I never did get a chance to thank you for being so understanding when I eloped with Frank. <laughs> What's to understand? A boy and a girl fall in love, they run off and get married. Besides, good-looking sister-in-laws aren't easy to come by. Still the Rock of Gibraltar. It's funny how a girl gets fooled between shadow and substance. What is it, Jesse? You've been, you've been talking in circles all day. Have I? Yes, you have. And I have the distinct feeling that you've been trying to tell me something you don't want to. I thought intuition was strictly a woman's department. Is there something? Oh, well, uh, howdy, Captain. Uh, Miss Jessica. Oh, now, Captain. Hey, that's going to make you, make you a nice new jacket. I'll tell you that right now. Never mind that, Reese. What about Cutler? Well, it took a heap of doing, Captain, but we did it. Where is he? Well, he's, uh... Tell the man, Reese. Well, 
Well, Captain, he's dead. The Indians got him. Indians? Well, you see, they were... Uh, these Vescalaires, and there was a raiding party, and Cutler's gang was shooting uh, it out. Captain, hold it. Captain, there's a telegram for you, sir. Thanks. Go, go on, Reese. Well, you see, Captain, they were shooting it out to beat the band, and by the time Reese, we got there, they were at it hand to hand, and there they were, they were fighting it out hand to hand. And you Reese. know how they, you know how these Indians are. I mean, they'll chop you with that tomahawk, and they'll take you with that tomahawk and go. Reese. So the Mescaleros got him. Yes, sir. And it happened just the way Reese said? Well, Captain, nothing ever happens, you know, just exactly the way Reese says, but... But he's dead. Is that it? Yes, sir. Yeah. You four are not to be believed. I'm surprised you found your way back into Laredo. Why, what's the matter, Captain? This telegram is from the Mexican authorities. Bart Cutler escaped from prison, killing two guards. Last seen crossing back into Texas. away with 8,000 in gold, killed the bank manager, wounded two others. Now, I don't know how the four of you could be dumb enough to mistake a dead body for Bart Cutler, but I don't want any more mistakes. I want Cutler. Is that clear? Oh, oh yes, sir, Captain. Clear as a bell. It better be. Now, one of the town folks says Cutler was wounded. Might need some doctoring, Captain. He's headed southeast. Fan out through here. Check the doctors in every town. Reese. Yes, sir? Not that I buy your story. But check with the Mescaleros. Cutler may have planted that body to fool us. Well, well, no, sir. You see, the way it happened... That's just the kind of thing a man like Cutler might try, Captain. If anyone can find out, Reese, you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll see you guys in Minosa. Captain, that's great thinking. Best idea you ever had. I'll get right on it. Right on it. Oh, just a second, three. There's something about this Cutler incident that smells. Now, the man's a killer. I don't want any more deaths because we didn't do our job right. Understood? Yes, sir. Now get moving. Hello, Jesse. Excuse me. Have I interrupted you? No, no, of course not. Well, you seem preoccupied. Only puzzled. They've goofed off a million different ways. But something about this Cutler episode has me stymied. You know, it's, it's almost as if they were protecting a killer. Well, maybe they're protecting someone else, someone they love. People do that sometimes. Those four? <laughs> they don't even like the same brand of whiskey. Still, it's possible. I suppose so. But for the life of me, I can't figure out what they have in common with Bart Cutler. I don't know. Maybe we should have told him the truth, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. As long as there's still a chance of nailing Cutler. I suppose so. Um, I can't help thinking he's got to find out sooner or later. Yeah? Well, later just suits me fine. What do you think, Joe? Well, I guess you're right, Chad. We started this thing, didn't we? So we're just gonna have to see it through. All right. You know what I was wondering? You guys figure that Miss Jessica knows what's going on? I think so. That's probably where he came to hide out the other day. As a matter of fact, it would have been a perfect spot, right under our noses. Question is, whose side is she on? Well, now, what do you mean by that? A Cutler is still her husband. She's not going to help a rat like Cutler. Not willingly, anyway. I admire your refreshing idealism. Unfortunately, it is my experience that not all women live up to it. Oh, well, Eric, 
I'd hate to see you become a woman hater just because you've had a few bad experiences with them. Well, no experience with a woman is a bad one. Not if you learn from it. True. All right, then, Romeo, tell me. Whose side is she on? Ours or Cutler's? I don't know. Well, I, for one, gentlemen, am willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. You remember Tootsie Cake Wilson? Oh. <laughs> well, she buried for her yeah. husband and collected all that insurance money, and you were willing to give her the benefit of a doubt, too. Oh, come on now. Who'd expect an old woman like that to put arsenic in the icing of a birthday cake and then serve it to her husband? No one. That's why she was so successful. All right, all right, Eric. You were right that time. But let me tell you something. You're way off the track this time. Yeah, well, he is right about something. Cutler is a killer. He is wounded and he is desperate which means we're gonna have to try and cover anybody and everybody he might try to contact. Great, great, but who's gonna volunteer for the lousy job of hiding in town and watching Miss Jessica's office, huh? Hey, fellas, the coast clear, huh? Come on in, Yeah. Hey, uh, what are you doing here? Well, what do you mean, what am I doing here? Where you expect me to be, huh? Well, we thought you'd be with the Mescaleros by now. Sure, don't you remember? Whoosh, whoosh. That must have been some fight. I wish I'd have seen it. Mm. Now, who put me up to that story? Now, what do I do now, huh? Tell me that. Come on, Reese, you're smarter than that. Uh, you're not going to be with the Mescaleros. You're going to stay in Laredo. Oh. Oh, I am, huh? Sure you are, Reese. Now, you got to know that if Cutler's wounded, he's going to be heading right straight for Miss Jessica. Oh, yeah. Well, well, sure, sure, I know that. But, hey, what if the captain spots me, huh? Well, don't you let him, Reese. Meanwhile, I'll be checking out the bank of Reynosa. I'll uh, take the south trip. I'll check east of town for tracks. Now, look, Reese, we'll all meet up at Boot Hill. If anything happens, you wire us at the sheriff's office in Reynosa, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel better? <sighs> that infection's getting worse. You've got to have a doctor. That's the first thing they'd look for. Well, what about your ex-girlfriend in Laredo? <laughs> you told me she was a doc. That's a good idea. I don't think she'll come. She'll come. What's her name? Jessica Boyd. I'll get her here. What are we supposed to do in the meantime? Sit and wait till the Rangers find us? He didn't get shot on purpose. I never said he did. It's getting too hot for you here, Lester. Why don't you just move on? Sure. Just as soon as you tell us where the money is. <laughs> Nothing like greed to keep rats on a sinking ship. Don't push us, Bart. We did our share and we want our cut. You'll get yours. Just keep your shirt on. It's easy for you to talk. You got cause for hanging around here. Oh. Us, we're just in this for the money. You better keep those fat lips buttoned tighter together. Uh, easy, easy. You're gonna get your fair share, Lester. I never said you wouldn't. We worry about you dying, Bart. None of us being able to find the money. Well, stop worrying, cause he ain't gonna die. I'll be right back. Oh, all right, Bart. Where is it? Well, you're not likely to find it. And if you kill me, you'll really never find it. So you'll trust me, boys. The only thing you're going to be able to do... <coughs>
thought you'd like some tea and cookies, Mr. Bennett. Oh, that's, uh, that's just fine, Little Morton, just fine. Hey, that girl looks familiar to me. Oh, who? That girl, just walking into Dr. Boyd's office. That's who. Dr. Boyd has many patients. Milk or lemon? Oh, oh, just both, just both, Twitter. But the lemon will curdle the milk. Oh, that's just, just fine. Just fine, Widow Morton. Mr. Bennett, I don't know if I like your using my store to spy on Dr. Boyd. Are you sure this is important ranger business? Hmm? Oh, yes, ma'am. Foolish me. I thought you were just using it as an excuse for a social call. Hmm? I know how shy you are, dear boy. And it's charming. But there's really no need. I'm not a young girl, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Harris. Take that medicine and get a good night's sleep. You're just fine. Bye. Yes? I'm Liza Wilson. Come in. You're uh, better looking than I thought you'd be. More educated, too. I can uh, see how we'd uh, go for a girl with learning. Uh, I'm sorry, but I've missed the point. The point is Bart Cutler. He's in a bad way. There's nothing I can do. You know about healing. You can save him. Believe me, it's better if he dies. Better for you, better for me, better for everyone. Well, I ain't gonna let him die. Well, you'd better come along with me nice and quiet. I don't want anyone to get hurt. <sighs> you love him enough to kill for him? Yes. I already have. I'll, I'll get my bag. More milk and lemon, Mr. Bennett? Well, uh, 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 no thanks, Widow Morton. No thanks. Well, let me get you some more cookies. They're your favorites. Well, uh, well, maybe, maybe this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not on our date, are you? I'm sorry, but uh, an emergency just came up. I'll go along. Maybe I can help. Oh, no. Uh, strictly women's work. In that case, I won't be needed. You must be new in Laredo. Yeah, part of a wagon train on the outskirts of town. Yes, well, we're in a hurry. We have to go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 I'm really sorry, fellas. I really am at that. Ain't you got no manners? <laughs> fellas, I gotta get to my horse. No, I gotta get to my horse. I gotta get out of here. Ooh. I'm telling you, fellas. I gotta get to my horse. And I'm gonna get to my horse. You understand that? Sir Captain, I thought you were with the Mescaleros. Well, well, I am, Captain. I mean, I mean, it was. I mean, I'm going there right now, and I, I'm a little late, so I better hurry, huh? Bennett, come to my office. Yes, sir. Uh. Now, I want some answers, and I want them fast. Oh, now, come on, Captain. Answers, now. 
Now, answers. How am I going to know the answer if I, if I don't even know the question? Hmm? Well, I'll give you some questions, plenty of them. One. Come in. Senor Montoya. Senor Captain. I am here on the most urgent of business. Oh, what is it? Though we serve on opposite sides of the border, I have respected your work these many years. Thank you. Therefore, when I hear you accused, I come to ask you in person. I believe in your honesty. I believe I will hear the truth. The truth about what? Did you assist Senor Bart Cutler in his escape from prison? What? Cap, I gotta tell you something real important. Quiet, Reese. Why would I help Bart Cutler escape? Are you not aware that he was taken from your rangers on Mexican soil? No, I wasn't. And I don't think I like your attitude, Montoya. Nobody's gonna stand in my office and accuse me of collusion with a killer. Now that you've got reason, spit him out and spit him out fast. Very well. We have learned through a prisoner that Bart Cutler is an alias. The man's real name is Frank Parmalee. About this, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Captain. I did. I have my answer. Can I be of any help, Senor Capitan? He'll, uh, He'll probably try crossing the border at Pedras Negras. He, uh, he knew the area very well as a boy. Paya con Dios. Sorry, I mean, well, me and the boy just, uh, well, we kind of hoped it. Well, we, we sure put you in the soup, didn't we, huh? Jessica, who's that girl? Well, that's why I was following him, Captain. I just figured that maybe we could. Let's go. Yes, sir. <laughs> at the sheriff's office. What'd you boys find out? He was here all right. He left a pool of blood in the street. But the tracks beat her out around Sackjaw. Let's face it, we've drawn a blank. Better wire the captain for orders. I sure hate to do that. Yeah, me too. Wait a minute. Look there. There's only one place you'd be heading to that fast. Let's get the job done right this time, huh, man? Come on. I'm sorry, but this is one time you won't be able to run away from it. Better take a stiff one. You wouldn't let me die in a crummy barn like this, would you, Jess? Imagine me dying in church. 
Except wait. How long? I don't know. We'll just have to watch and do the best we can. Why risk your life to save a man you said was better off dead? He's a living thing. I hate to see life die. Even in insects. Well, why didn't you say something to the ranger captain when he came over? I thought you might kill him. Huh. Is that it? Or did you think maybe if you saved Bart's life, he'd be grateful? Grateful enough to fall in love with you again? He'll never be grateful to anyone for anything. You'll learn that soon enough. Stop writing him down. You had your chance with him. You couldn't make it. Maybe I can. Maybe. All right, we'll wait him out. If that lady doc heals him, we'll split the money and ride. If she don't, we'll shoot all three of them and take the loss. You, uh, think I'm not good enough for him, don't you? Not at all. If anything, you're too good for him. You're not fooling me. Fooling you? You think it takes brains and fancy dresses and good English. Well, maybe it takes guts. Maybe that's what you haven't got. Lies, I burned the rot from his shoulder. But believe me, there's far worse inside him. Don't you see? He'll just use you the way he used me, the way he used everybody. <sighs> Shut up. When he's all right, you're riding out. You got it? It's quite clear. You'll be lucky if he doesn't kill you, so you can't go telling everybody about this. He's not soft about things like that, you know. He knows I won't tell. Why does he trust you? Why does he keep talking about you all the time like you're carved out of marble. Is he going to live? I don't know. If he dies, if you let him die, I'm going to kill you. Yes, I was aware of that. Any suggestions? Yeah, we can't just go barging in there. Miss Jessica's liable to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait for a break. Meanwhile, why don't we plug up the exits, huh? The infection is <clears throat> clean now. But you'll need to rest for a few days. Ah, there'll be plenty of time to rest when we get to Pedro's Negras. Start riding now, and you'll never live that long. Ain't none of us gonna live long if we keep hanging around here. Never the first time in his life, Lester is right. Oh, here, help me up. OK. Where's the money? <laughs> it's under the seat in the buckboard. We'll just make sure. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh, wow. It's like one of those merry-go-rounds we rode on when we were kids, remember? No. Now, if you don't mind, I'll be going home. Can't let you do that, Jess. I still need you. What about me? What about you? Well, I don't want her along. Nobody cares what you want, sweetheart. 
Well, I've got something to say. You got nothing to say. Now pack that stuff up. We're gonna move out. Here it is. Just like he said. Well, no use waiting around for sick folk. Let's go. Hold it right there. Fool, they must have followed you. Lord, honest, baby. Shut up. Come here, Jesse. Come here. All right, get up. Oh. Don't you move. You know that. I'm still giving orders. Now stay put. Frank. Frank, it's Ed. I want to talk to you. There's no sense running anymore, Frank. You've got nowhere to go. Why hurt anyone else? I can't help you. Come and get me, big brother. Remember how you always used to come and get me to blow my nose? Well, how are you going to save my hide this time? I can't save you, Frank. I want to very much, but I can't. Noble lawman. Hmm. I'll make you a deal. You give me a 10-minute head start, and you can have Jesse. You tell me no, Frank, and I'll kill her. I swear I will. All right. Let her go. Oh, no. I don't trust your lap dogs. You send them back to Laredo, then I'll throw my gun out, and you can have her. You and the boys ride back to Laredo. Do what? I said ride now. Yes, sir. But he's your brother who made a deal. Personally, you stay out of it. You say one word and you're going to get it too. You hear that? All right, Frank. They're on their way. It's up to you. Well, as Big Brother always said, man's got to be as good as his word. She's all yours. He has a gun! is the Choctaw's game. Well, I only hope they feel the same way. I'm sure they will. You know, I'm trying to decide whether I should be angry with you or not. I forgot your birthday. 
No. It isn't my birthday, is it? No. I see you're still the sort of man who can't tell a new dress when he sees it. Oh, now, Cap. You were going to use this material to, to make yourself a jacket. Remember that? I remember, Reese. Thank you. Don't stay away too long, Jesse. We'll miss you. Well, better come and visit me once in a while, or I might just send the Choctaws back on a warpath. Goodbye. Goodbye. Adios. Bye. Bye, dear. Goodbye. Bye. Now, what are you for standing around gawking at? I don't think I haven't forgotten that last job you bungled. Your misplaced loyalty is not appreciated. Well, now, Captain. This we is the are Texas to... Rangers, not a bleeding heart society. If someone breaks the law, you arrest them. I don't care if that someone's your mother. You do your job. Right now, your job is stable duty. That's all you're fit for. Yes. Where are you going? So if you had stable duty. I'll tell you when you have stable duty. Right now, we're going to the saloon. I'm buying drinks. Then you'll have stable duty. Now. Come on. This here killer claimed that he was drunk and he didn't know what he was doing. And old Temple Houston himself took the case. He'd give that jury a wingding of a speech on the evils of drink, but they voted him guilty anyway. Now, a funny thing happened. The day he was strung up, the bartender looked at him and said, I always told him he'd take one drop too many. <laughs> 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 one drop too many? Don't you get it? Cotton sure missed his calling, didn't he? Should have been one of them dime novel writers. And Joe, you wouldn't doubt his veracity, would you? Well, he better not. I can handle my liquor as well as any man in the Texas Rangers. And you're Texas Rangers. Yeah, that's right. Well, in that case, the drinks are on me. Texas Rangers! My name's Beamish, Lemuel Beamish. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Beamish. Uh, barkeep, set them up all around. Uh, make mine whiskey and milk. Whiskey and milk? Yeah, builds you up while it tears you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you boys on duty here? We're heading back to Laredo in the morning. What a coincidence. I'm going there tomorrow myself. A little toast to the Texas Rangers. Many's the time I've set the type that emblazon your exploits to the readers of the Frontier Journals. An honor, gentlemen. You a printer, Mr. Beamish? Master printer, sir. Well, Mr. Beamish, it's been a pleasure. Let's go, Joe. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't go yet. I was about to order another round and propose a little game of cards. It's just as well, I suppose. Every cent I make at my press, I lose at poker. Every man has his weakness. Mr. Beamish, a wise man once said it's possible to make a strength out of a weakness. You should get some expert advice. I'll be glad to give you a few tips. Cotton, the man doesn't want to go on losing. The only time Cotton Buckmeister ever wanted cards is when he's playing solitaire. Uh, very nice of you gentlemen to offer. Uh, bartender, 
Bring us some more drinks. There's got to be something more exciting to do in this town than teach a printer to play poker, huh? Sure there is. We can't afford it. Well, a couple of practice hands won't take long. Besides, he's buying the drinks. The least we can do is return the favor. Takes uh, two. Well, I hate to break this up, but it's after midnight. Well, let's play one more hand, huh? Well, haven't you had enough? According to these IOUs, you two owe me most of your next two months' salary. Well, I'm ready for bed. How about you, Joe? I can't afford a bed, so I might as well stay in. It might break your luck to quit in the middle of a winning streak. Well. Sure beats me how you won every game when we was teaching you, and now you just keep losing. Are you sure you can afford to stay in? Easy come, easy go. I can always make more money. Besides, it's a pleasure to learn from a good poker player. I hired you to get the suitcase. You had the chance. I did not figure this man for a knife, senor. Oh, my partner's full of nasty surprises. I shall repay him this beamish. I don't care what you do to him. I want that suitcase. Manana, senor. Manana. some breakfast. That's real big of you, Cotton. You come along too, Lem. Just what I had in mind. As a matter of fact, I'd like to ride along with you to Laredo. <laughs> Mr. Beamish. Just call me Lem. Hey, see, the way I figured, why should I spend all day cooped up in a hot, dusty stagecoach when I can be enjoying such fine company as that of three Texas Rangers? Well, it'd be an honor to say I'd ridden with you. Mighty nice of you to have such a high opinion of the Rangers. Hey, see, Cotton, I bet you're a pretty good judge of horse flesh. Well, so I've been told. Texans are said to be pretty shrewd horse traders. I'd appreciate you coming along to help me choose. Well, seeing as how you seem to have changed my luck, that's the least I can do. The only thing I know about horses is they've got six legs. Six legs? That's right. They got four legs in front and two in back. <laughs> <laughs> Full of sayings like that. Senor Morgan. Uh, oh, the stage ready to pull out. Oh, no, senor. Didn't what? I tell you not Miss to Beamish, wait? Miss Beamish, he has pulled out. What? See, si, it's Bardad. He rode off with the Rangers, all three of them. I always said he was smarter than he looks. Get some horses. See. Si. says he falls a hundred times between here and Laredo. Uh-huh, no bet. At the rate we're going, we'll be dead of sunstroke before we get to Laredo.
going to be able to fix that or not, Cotton? I'm going to get it fixed. It's just going to take me a minute, that's all. Uh, that's what you said half an hour ago. What are you guys so grumpy about? See, that's what happens when you miss your beauty sleep. Oh, you're feeling good enough for both of us, Cotton. Well, he ought to be. His pockets are just jingling with our money. It ain't money till payday. It's just IOUs. I figured you guys were just plumb more out. I didn't think you were poor losers. It's more than that, Cotton. We're not even halfway to Laredo, thanks to your bringing that tenderfoot printer along. Well, it wasn't his fault. The cinch broke. Besides, he ain't no ordinary printer. He makes up books. What kind of books? All kinds, even mysteries. He's gonna give me one. <laughs> what are you gonna do with a book? I'm gonna read it, that's what. Cotton, since I've known you, you've never read a book. And I got $10 says you won't read that one either. I'll just take that bet. I'm gonna start reading it as soon as I get back to the barracks. Uh, who says we're even going to get there? Well, what are you guys so itchy to get back to Laredo for? Well, we just don't aim to waste our time waiting for you and your friend out here for half the night. Well, I can't just leave him by himself. Well, uh, maybe you can't caught him, but we can. See, playing nursemaid just wasn't our idea. Here you are, Cotton. A special edition. Oh, I sure do appreciate it, man. What's it called? Hey, Diddle Diddle. You mean like the uh, cat and the fiddle and the cow jumping over the moon? What kind of book is that, Cows Jump Over the Moon? Nursery rhymes, Cotton. The most complete collection in print. You want to pay up now, Cotton? But you still want to read in the barracks where the boys can watch it. He can read us to sleep at night. Nursery rhymes? I thought you said it was about mysteries. There's a whole chapter on mysteries. For example, I've seen you where you've never been and where you never will be, yet caught within that very place, you can be seen by me. That don't make any sense at all. It does if you're looking in a mirror. Yeah. There's another one. Without a bridle or a saddle, across a thing, I ride a straddle. Beamish, you can't ride with a saddle, much less without one. Come on, Eric, let's go. Uh, you'll excuse us, Mr. Beamish. Where are they going? Oh, some rush to get back to Laredo. It's going to take me a while to fix this saddle. Don't worry, we won't miss them a bit. What about the $10, Cotton? I'll just tear up one of them IOUs. All hard, isn't it? I wish I wish we were all riding together. Well, it'd be fine if you were willing to ride bareback. You've got a point. I'm afraid. down here for night. No need of stopping, Cotton. I'm not tired, not a bit. Well, there's no chance of getting to Laredo before dark. We better stay here than out in the open. I was, uh, I was hoping to be in Laredo tonight. You'd be risking your neck trying to ride in the dark, Lamb. You need a lot more practice before you try that. Come on. That's all that's left of what them army wives used to grow. They had themselves a real fine garden once. Well, we'll have us some apples for supper. and quiet. If the ranger spots you, it'll be blamed on the Indians. Now go on.
or something? Wind in the trees, maybe. The colonel's wife had them shipped out here from Vermont. Nobody thought they'd live, but they did. Now, why don't you sit down, ma'am? You're making me nervous with all that patience. Sitting down might make you feel better. But for me, it's a purely painful process. Yeah, I reckon you're right. It's might early to go to bed. Too bad we didn't bring those cards. I'd give you a chance to win some of your money back. I wouldn't have a chance against you. Hey, you could tell me some more of them mysteries. What was that when you started about uh, riding a straddle without no bridle or saddle? The thing I ride has eyes behind. Without me, he could hardly see. Tell me then, what could I be? I can't say as I can figure it. Spectacles. Yeah. Sounds like something's spooking the horses. I'll take a look. Get your ears up, boss. Cotton, is that you? Up and then I'll go for a doctor. Got to tell you, my niece coming to Laredo tomorrow. Say she gets this. All I've got, all I've got in the world. You just take it easy, Lamb. No, God. Listen, just tell her. Hey, diddle diddle. Huh? Hey, diddle diddle. Came a young woman, a walking, real tall. Came a young woman, a picking them all. Don't make any sense. Just tell her. Laid in his grave. Laid in his grave. Hadn't been for me catching the rancid smell of bear grease, I might have been killed. <laughs> well, fighting that thieving engine was like tangling with a wildcat. He was so slippery, I couldn't hold on to him. Got poor Lem with a knife. Uh, Lem was a likable fella. Bad poker player, though. That's why Cotton found him likable. It isn't every day a man wins $500. Yeah, especially a man like Cotton. It just so happens that my luck has changed. Is that so? Well, young man, how would you like to test that theory? Poor Lem buried out there and his niece on the way to Laredo expecting him to meet the stage. I gotta take her that satchel and tell her he's dead. It's just a shame. A crying shame. Well, there goes our money, Eric. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you this, we better get fresh cracking. He's got a joke on a wall-eyed blower. You fellas like me to take care of that for you? You just scare them off. The approach has to be more subtle. Oh, I see. But you think of the ways and means, Eric. I'm gonna make the rounds.
him if it weren't for you. I thought you was the fella that jumped me. Boy, it sure don't pay to do you no favors. I reckon I owe you for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you do, Cotton. Now, what do you figure it's worth? Was there ever a worse judge of character than me? First Beamish double-crosses me, and then to recoup, I hire two blundering fools. I really don't see what I need you two for. In Mexico, you will need both of us. Unless we get that satchel back, then none of us going to Mexico. We had it in our hands. Next time Next we... time? Those rangers got a look at you, didn't they? You stay away from those rangers. You'll find it easier to take it away from the woman they're going to give it to. And it was all your fault. My fault? What are you talking about? Any one of a dozen people could have heard your loud mouthing in the saloon about all the money I won. Well, it looks like your Indian friend was one of them. It's an old Yaki trick. They take this and wrap it around your neck. Stops you from yelling. An Indian? Cotton, how come you weren't ready for him? Well, I wasn't expecting any trouble on the main street of Laredo. Now listen, Pop. First, you thought there was a marauding Indian. Then somebody after the money you won. Now, could it be they were after this? Well, one of them grabbed it. Well, who'd want a bag full of nursery rhyme books? Well, there's a lot of kids running around, Cotton. Cotton, let's see, there's a uh, Ringo kid, Billy the kid, the James kids. <laughs> Why don't we open it up and take a look, huh? Gentlemen, I think we found a motive for murder and attempted robbery. I don't know how you do it, Cotton, but you sure got an eye for picking your friends. Well, maybe there was more to Beamish than met the eye. No, he was harmless. You know, I don't remember seeing any wanted posters on him. Well, I'm gonna get this over to the captain's office, Ponto. The captain's not even here, Cotton. You had to go to the Capitol. He won't be back till tomorrow or the next day. Well, then I'm gonna wake up the banker. Uh-uh. Make ourselves a laughing stock. <laughs> Four rangers who couldn't take care of a little suitcase until a girl comes to pick it up. Yeah. Well, I couldn't sleep a wink all night with all this money here. Cotton, nobody in his right mind is going to try to break into the rangers' barracks. No, 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 I understand how Cotton feels. And, Cotton, if you want to sit up all night and guard this money, why, I'll sit up with you. Yeah? I might have known you guys would start out helping me and end up helping yourselves to most of my bankroll. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cotton. Good to see a man about a horse. See ya. Well, Cotton, why don't you let Eric and me go down the stage depot for you and we'll meet your young lady and break the news to her kind of gentle like, huh? It's downright touching the way you guys are willing to put yourselves out for a buddy where there's money or a female involved. A rich female cotton, which is why you really should come with me to my tailor to get yourself some decent clothes before you lose the rest of your money. Yeah, I go to your tailor and then she gives you a cut of what I spend. Well, it just so happens that she's the only tailor in Texas who can make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Yeah, well, the day you start carrying a silk purse, that's the day I quit riding with you. Okay. Well, I, I never really did need fancy duds myself to impress a lady. I think I'll go on down and take a look at that rifle I can afford now. Morning, Cotton. Where'd you get that? Present for my friend. You ain't got no friends that give presents like that. I got you. Adios. Beamish. Well, uh, one thing for sure, there ain't much in the family resemblance. What? Oh, uh, not that he wasn't a likable fella, just not much on looks, though. Wasn't? But my uncle was supposed to meet me here. 
Where is he? Has anything happened to him? Yeah. Mm. Very nice. Yeah, it sure is. Can you imagine all that? $25,000, too? Chad, you know you'd never court the girl for her money. Well, I'm sure you've noticed, Eric, that there might be other compensations. Ah, yes. Poor Uncle Lem. It's awful, just awful. That terrible trip all the way out here to meet my only living kin and, and then to find he's dead. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. <laughs> now, now, it, it's gonna be all right. I know it's kind of tough to lose your only kin, but the money's safe and sound. Money? I, I don't understand. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five. I, I can't believe it. I counted it myself. Oh, you, you did. Well, you see, he was kind of a friend of mine, and, and he asked me to give it to you. And if I was you, I'd take it right over to the bank right now and deposit it. Why? Well, I don't want to scare you, but somebody tried to take it away from me last night. Now, it could have been the same fellas that knew your uncle was carrying it, and they killed him trying to get it. Please come in. Oh, ma'am? Ma'am, um, we're looking for Cotton Buckmeister. Oh, won't you come in? What do you two want? Uh, looks like we'll have to introduce ourselves, ma'am. My name's Chad Cooper. Eric Hunter, mademoiselle, and I do hope it is mademoiselle. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, and it is mademoiselle Millie. Well, my condolences, Miss Millie. I know how you must feel. But in times of bereavement, one should not be alone. I hope that you will have supper with me this evening. I know. Wait a second. Under any other circumstances, I'd be simply enchanted, but I must consider the proprieties. I am in mourning for my Uncle Lem. Well, I gotta go. I can't thank you for all you've done, Mr. Buckmeister. I just wish I could have done more. You two coming? And leave this young lady alone and unprotected? Never. Not for a minute. Figures. Well, I'm sure nothing can happen here in the hotel in broad daylight. Oh, ma'am, we're here just to make sure it won't. I'll flip you to see who stands first watch. I'm sure you gentlemen Tails. must have more important... You lose. It was heads. Well, not altogether. It means I have the evening watch. I'll order a special supper send-up. Au revoir. Never thought I'd meet two such gallant gentlemen in a place like this. <clears throat> see ya. Would you mind waiting out in the hall while I freshen up a bit? Oh, well, yeah, sure. But I, uh, I really don't see how you're going to make much of an improvement. Oh, you do say the most charming things. I'll be right outside. Cooper. Just call me Chad, ma'am. Where will I find Mr. Buckmeister? Oh, Mr. Buckmeister, down in Ranger headquarters, I reckon. Oh, I must talk to him. Was something bothering you? Well, I just remembered how remiss I was not thanking him properly. Oh, I see. Well, what about the money? We can't leave that unguarded. We? Well, yes, ma'am, we. Why, 
I certainly wouldn't even think about letting a pretty little thing like you walk along the streets of Laredo all by yourself. There's no telling what might happen. Well, in that case, we'll take it with us. Fine. I'll just put it in my bag. Right. Well, here we are, Miss Mary. Oh, a chat. <laughs> If you don't mind, I'd like to see Mr. Buckmeister alone. What I have to say is, well, personal. You understand? Oh, yeah, sure. Personal? <laughs> Women. I should have known you'd be in charge of the Rangers. Oh, well, I, I... It takes a man of authority to handle such an important job. I thought Chad was supposed to be guarding you. He was, but... I told him I wanted to talk to you alone. Me? Well, here, uh, uh, sit down, Miss Miller. Oh, thank you. You know... In all the excitement of our meeting, I I never did get the whole story about my poor dear uncle. How he was killed and all. It's a darn shame. And I feel real bad about it. Never should have let him ride along with us. Oh, you mustn't blame yourself. Well, I do. You see, he didn't want to stay overnight at the fort. I'm sure you did what you thought was best. I... I hope you don't think I'm being morbid in my curiosity, but but he was my favorite uncle. We were very close. Did he say anything about me? Anything at all? Yeah, he said you was coming to Laredo and he wanted you to have his suitcase, said it contained all his worldly goods. I thought there might have been something personal, some advice or something. Well, he, he did say there was something he wanted me to tell you. What? I reckon we'll never know. You mean he died before? No, but he wasn't talking straight. He was kind of out of his head. Well, can you remember anything he said, anything at all? Well, it was all jumbled up. He, he was talking about being buried one minute and about his book the next. Which book? The nursery rhymes. Hey, Diddle Diddle? Yeah, yeah, he talked some about that. Well, uh, can you remember anything? Well, please, try to remember. Well, it ain't easy to remember because it was all mixed up. It didn't make no sense. But it might to me. You see, when I was a little girl, we used to play a memory game. He'd say part of a rhyme, and I'd try to remember the rest. So if you could just try to remember even a few words, I might remember the rest. <laughs> Found them. Let's see if they're hidden in here. Quick. It just ain't no use, Miss Millie. I can't recall what he said. Well, maybe it would help if we went out to the fort. You don't want to go all the way out there. But I must. How come? Well, I... I couldn't leave Laredo tomorrow without saying a proper goodbye, without putting flowers on his grave. Well, if you're so set on going... The least I can do is take you. And the least I can do is provide a nice picnic lunch for us from the hotel. Shall we go? Uh, no, you just sit and make yourself comfortable. I got a bit of business I got to take care of before we go. I don't know how to thank you, Captain Buckmeister. Oh, uh, we're a little informal around here, ma'am, especially about rank. All the boys just call me Cotton, and I'd take it kindly if you did, too. Eric, could you do me a favor? Uh, what's the favor, Carl? Uh, would you take over for me now instead of later? I got something very important to do. Yeah, I suppose I could. <sighs> just a second now. Has that important thing you have to do got anything to do with Miss Millie? This is just between him and me. Uh, what about Miss Millie? Well, you know, she asked me to take her over to the office because she wanted to talk over something personal with Cotton. Now, what personal interest could she have in Cotton? She invited me on a picnic. I told you so. It was my opic. You watch your language. Now, he was just saying that she doesn't see too well. Well, she saw through you too quick enough. 
You know, I always figured you had more pride than to go courting a woman like that, Cotton. Why, folks are gonna figure you're a fortune hunter. Well, just for their information, it so happens she asked me. I'll bet you didn't put up much of an argument. Oh, well, you had reasons not to. 25,000. Now, you... Not that I blame you, Cotton. With a dowry like that, you could live in luxury. I ain't after anybody's money, and you know it. She just wants to lay some flowers on her uncle's grave, and she wants me to take her. Hey, Cotton, we haven't concluded our deal. Deal? I thought you said... Well, I said I could. I didn't say I would. My time is valuable. How valuable? You uh, still got some of my IOUs? It ain't that valuable. Lady in Captain Parmley's office says she's waiting to see you. Captain Buckmeister. Captain! Uh, fellas, it was like this. Oh, uh, isn't he democratic, though? Just one of the boys. Uh, those important papers you want to give me, Captain? She must have them with her. Outside. Anybody with her? The ranger. Just one? See. Si. Good. We'll wait for them here. Oh, they have rented a rig. They are going somewhere. Even better. Only one ranger in our way. Let's go. Forty dollars. I don't understand. You're charming it. But that is exactly what you owe me for that suit you're wearing. Let's see, I paid you for it. Cash. The bank says it's counterfeit. Every dollar of it. Counterfeit? I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just give me the money. Uh, look, my darling, at the moment, I'm a little short, but I'm sure that we could uh, reach some sort of an agreement. My darling, I would like to. But as a businesswoman, I must have the $40. Oh, the suit. Since you insist on putting this in a business level, I must tell you that the jacket is a little tight around the shoulders. I see. Yeah, it looks like we're not the only ones that are losers, right? Is, is that the new uniform of the day? Eric, you gotta be ashamed of yourself playing strip poker on company time. Yes, whatever would the captain say? Well, uh, let's hope the captain doesn't find out that three of his men have been spending counterfeit money all over town. Four, Captain God. You know, the banker said that money was almost perfect. It fooled him if the printer to use better paper. Yeah. I was thinking about the fellows that tried to steal it. They'd have been in for a surprise. If the money is what they were after. Now, what else would they have been after? Well, Beamish was a printer. He must have had the plates. And with the plates, anybody could print more money. You know, I, I get the feeling that Miss Millie knows that money's fake. She was awful careless about leaving it unguarded up in the hotel. And she was awful anxious to talk to Cotton alone. Mm -hmm. uh, if she didn't find the plates in the suitcase, she'd figure that Beamish hid them somewhere. Cotton was with him, so Cotton must have some idea where. Uh, the fort's a logical place. That's where they're headed. You know, I got a feeling that Cotton's not having any picnic there either. Where did it happen? Here, right in there. Dark. He was wandering around outside mostly while I was tending the horses. What a quaint old stove. Anything inside? Is he dead? 
No, just unconscious. I hear that rangers don't die so easy. Yaki, get his gun. We go out, check that stove. You won't find anything in there. And I'm quite prepared to give you the money if you let me go free. What do you take me for? A thief. It's not the money we're after, and you know it. We want the same thing that you do. The plates that your uncle stole. You can't steal something that your very own. He made those plates. They were a work of art. We were in this together. I was going to take him to Mexico to exchange the bills for pesos so far south of the border nobody find out for months. But he got greedy, and he cut out on me. Now, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble by telling me where those plates are hidden. I haven't the vaguest notion. Then why are you here? Because he knows. Oh, well, Yaki has ways to make a man beg to talk when he comes That through. won't work. Why not? Because he doesn't know he knows. Well, now, that doesn't make any My sense. My uncle left me word in some kind of a uh, code or something, but because it's garbled, he doesn't remember it. I think I can help him. Well, then, let's get started. Not until we have a deal. What kind of a deal? The original plan that I get my uncle's share. You don't have much family feeling, do you? Doing business with the people who did your uncle in. I'm all the family I've got. I'm sorry, Miss Millie. These are the same bushwhackers that tried to steal your uncle's money. Oh, Cotton, I don't know what we're going to do. It isn't his money they're after at all. What is it? Something he says Uncle Lem stole from them. You believe him? Well, it isn't what I believe, but if we don't tell him, he's going to kill you for sure and, and turn me over to that... that savage. When? We've got to think our way out of this, Cotton. Now, think hard. Where could Uncle Lem have hidden something? I ain't got no idea. There's only one clue in that message he left you to give me. That don't make no sense at all. Hey, diddle diddle's no help. But there are half a dozen rhymes in the book with that phrase in them. Does this sound familiar? I had a little pony. Hey, diddle, hi, diddle. I had a little pony and put him in a stall. Well? No. Uh, what about this one? Uh, hey diddle, ho diddle, listen to the riddle diddle. Work the men hard, don't let them get soft. Make them pitch hay way up in the loft. There ain't no loft. We better go on foot from here. No sense warning them. Go around the back way. We're wasting time. Now we're gonna find those plates if we have to dig up this fort inch by inch. I may have had them on him. We'll start with the grave. In his grave. And there was something about a young woman. Get him on his feet. tree alongside his grave. Planted the plates, too. All right, Ranger, start digging. Now, wait a minute. You heard me dig. All right, you heard what the man said. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, 
grass grow ripe and ready to fall, came a young woman walking real tall. Came a young woman a picking them all. Don't play innocent, Miss Millie. I don't know what you're talking about. You've got no right to accuse somebody unless you got some proof. Oh, Cotton, how can you be so blind? Don't you know why she brought you out here? Because she wants the plates Beamish printed the money with. What on earth are you saying? I came out here to put flowers on my uncle's grave. This is all a, a terrible shock to me, just terrible. I don't know what I'm going to do. A, a woman alone and penniless. You, you'll be all right, Miss Millie. If there's any reward for these Jaspers, you can have my share, so you can get home. You tried to save my life. At least I owe you that. You're a dear man. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go. The only kind of plates you're gonna find out here are in that picnic hamper. Which reminds me, I'm hungry. I'm gonna have a piece of that fried chicken. Don't touch that. Don't or I'll shoot. Oh, you wouldn't do that, Miss Millie. Don't count on it. Untie those men, and the rest of you keep your hands up. <sighs> Paradise was lost because of an apple tree, too. I come back here and find no one on duty. But I hear the Texas Rangers are circulating counterfeit money. Well, Captain, I can explain. Cotton, if we... you try to explain it, we'll be here all night. And it's Saturday. But to make a long story short, Captain, Cotton won the money from the man who made it, and we won it from Cotton. And after we discovered it was counterfeit, we rounded up the counterfeiters. And the money and the plates are right there in that bag. Well, I reckon that about closes the case, huh, Captain? Except that I owe you guys something for breaking up that picnic. Let's have a drink. I'm buying. <laughs> Not tonight, Cotton. Empty your pockets, boys. Over here. Come on, come on. Come on, move along. But, Captain, some of this is good money. How do you know it's good? The only one who can tell it's good or bad is the banker, and the bank doesn't open till Monday morning. Oh, just a minute, Cotton. Oh, thanks, Captain. I always said you had a big heart. Do you remember, Cotton? That's just a loan until Monday morning. Come on, you said you were fired. <laughs>
Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại.